Hello, Tech Pros, episode 208. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week, we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity. Wednesday, leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people and communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. And Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to be here on Friday. Happy Friday. People Friday here on Hello Tech Pros. We don't have a signature guest, a featured guest, because this is day number five of our free series on starting your first business. If you're an entrepreneur, a entrepreneur, or if you're a technical professional who wants to launch a freelancing company, a product, a service, whatever kind of company that you want, this is the podcast for you. This is an entire week of podcasts, seven days of episodes from my experience and the experience of all of my guests. Man, I've interviewed over 200 guests so far on Hello Tech Pros. And the most popular episodes by far are the entrepreneurship episodes. I've learned a ton talking and interviewing uh, these amazing entrepreneurs from all kinds of different sectors. And I found that there's some common things that people struggle with and common things that are accelerators to help you get your company off the ground. In the early, early stages, so many people worry about the wrong thing. Like, what's the right technology that's going to scale up to a billion users, right? Um, what what logo do I need? What's the perfect font choice for... Hey, dude, all that stuff doesn't matter. This is the stuff that matters, the stuff that I'm teaching here in this course in the early, early stages of first launching your first business and getting it up off the ground and, and connecting to those first customers. If you've missed the other four episodes so far, no worries. You can go back and get access to all of the episodes, including the email uh, compendium course that goes along with it, including the homework assignments that I will be holding you accountable to uh, once you sign up for the course. If you go to hellotechpros.com slash start, that's hellotechpros.com slash start. I'll start sending you an, you an email every day with um, the next episode, starting with episode number one, as well as the key takeaways, the call to actions, and all the homework items. I actually read all of the responses, and I've gotten a couple of people so far say, wow, Chad, I didn't realize that I was going to get a live response from you, like not from an automated system. Yes, I love to do that. I love to interact with my guests. I love to interact with my audience. And I love to really help people solve the problems and get down deeper into what's going on in their life, what's going on in their business, or just offers them some encouragement. Hey, I really am proud of you for stepping up and following this. Like, way to go, knock out homework number one. So, it is an interactive course, and I'll be there every step of the journey. Go to hellotechpros.com slash start. It's absolutely free. Uh, there's nothing to pay. And uh, here's what we've learned so far. Here's what we've talked about. We've talked about um, how to find your ideal business. And to do that first, you need to get past the anxiety that handcuffs you to your miserable nine to five job. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. If you're still in that miserable nine to five, if you love your nine to five job, if you love your 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. job, whatever hours that you work, fantastic. I'm so happy for you. That's great. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who just feel miserable and stuck in the career that they have, even if they have a high paying, you know, uh, great, uh, they're in a great industry, they're at a great company, they get paid a great salary, they have great benefits. But just some people feel miserable anyway because you have this spirit inside of you, this entrepreneurship spirit that needs to get out, kind of like this creativity in you that needs to get out. So on Monday, we talked about how to get past that anxiety that a lot of people struggle with, not just you know people like me. I have had social anxiety in the past that I've dealt with, but just a lot of people have anxieties about leaving their job and going out on their own and how are they going to pay the bills and how are they going to get insurance? You know, how are they going to explain it to their spouse and to their loved ones? Very, very scary stuff. We talked about that on Monday. On, on Tuesday, how to find the startup idea you were meant to launch. So really diving into, you know, there's something for everyone. I truly believe that there is someone for everyone and there is something for everyone. There is a business idea. There is a business plan that you were meant to launch. And on Tuesday, we talked about that. Wednesday, 
how to bring on help, how and when to bring on help, specifically the when to bring on help for your startup, and then how to do it. So, you know, do, gosh, how do you think about it? Like, there's so many things that I got to do if I'm going to build this business. I got to do all the things. How do I get all the things done? And then I don't have any money. Like, I don't have a lot of savings to go out and hire a bunch of employees. So do I go get venture capitalists? Do I try to bootstrap into do it on my own? If I am bootstrapping it, like, where do I start? And what are the things I worked on? Uh, Wednesday's episode really helps you dive down into the when and how to bring on help for your startup, how to get it done. Yesterday, we talked about probably one of the most controversial subjects in this course. Yesterday, if you missed yesterday's episode and you're a technical professional, you might have gotten a little defensive. You might have got a little angry at Chad. Bring it on. Please give me some feedback. I would love to hear your feedback. Go to hellotechpros.com slash start. And then when you get that email about day four, the technology stack, like send me some feedback and say, hey, brother, I completely disagree because of X, Y, and Z. This is the technology stack that we talked about in this episode that most technical professionals fail to master in their startup. It's a huge, important piece of your startup. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, is he talking about Python versus Ruby versus uh, Java versus whatever, .NET? Uh, you'll see. Go back to yesterday's episode and you'll see. Today, we're here to get to brass tacks. We're here to get to the money, baby. And that is how to find your first customers. The problem is, if you're like me, you hate selling. Selling is a dirty word. Sales is a dirty word. Sales people sounds yucky for some reason to me. It always has been. And I, I think it goes back to, you know, when I was a kid, I was growing up, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. We were kind of lower middle class, uh, American, white Americans, right? So we lived in an okay neighborhood. We were safe. We had a very small house. Um, you know, my, my parents were working class individuals. My dad was, uh, my stepdad was putting himself through law school and my mom was trying to support him as he was getting, uh, getting back into law school and, and, and getting his degree. And through that process, man, we didn't have a lot of money. And I just remember over and over and over my stepdad talking and griping and complaining about these salespeople everywhere we go. He had something bad and horrible to say about salespeople. You go to a car dealership, and your car is like falling apart and it's like you know the the <laughs> the engine's falling like the speedometer uh literally did not work we had no idea how fast we were going the lining on the inside of the station wagon that that our family had you know the lining was falling out and uh it was just it, it was a busted beat up piece of junk you know it was a junker and and when we finally went in it's like okay we got to get another car we got to pick something do we go new? Do we go used? And it felt like jumping into <laughs> jumping into the ocean full of sharks. They were just like, dun, 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 you know, circling us like, hey, what can I help you with? What can I put you in? Like, how, what's it going to take to get you in this car today? And the high pressure, super high pressure, especially in these used dealerships that we were going to, uh, to get a nicer, new for us, but nicer used, uh, gently used automobile it was a horrible experience and I could I could feel, like tangibly feel the frustration and the anxiety that my parents were feeling, you know, because they didn't have a lot of money. And these individuals, these sales individuals were really pressing them really, really hard into you have to make a decision, you have to make a decision today and you have to buy from me right now because, you know, if you don't, then you might go down the street and you might you might buy a car from a different dealer. Uh, you might go to a, a different salesperson and that person get the commission. And it just felt really, really bad. And now fast forward to when I'm adult, and I had lots and lots of those experiences I, as a kid where I could just really feel my parents' frustration and anxiety and just kind of, um, I don't know, just pressure, being under the pressure of feeling like that you're pressing into buying something when you didn't want to and making a coming coming to that buyer's remorse where you bought something you spent thousands of dollars on something and you're like you know what this <laughs> this vehicle is not what we wanted or this 
vacation that we bought from this person who was selling cheap, cheap, cheapo vacations is not exactly the vacation we had in mind. And so we had some horrible experiences growing up. And then as an adult, right, I'm like, okay, I don't like sales. I don't want to ever be in sales. And so I, uh, partly because of the sales, but mostly because of my love of technology and my social anxiety of not wanting a job where I had to actually deal with people day in and day out, I got into software development and that's great and that's wonderful. And one of my buddies down the hall got into a multi-level marketing program. I almost said scam. I'll say scam because it was a scam and it kind of pissed me off. It didn't kind of piss me off. It really pissed me off. This guy brought uh, Mona V. Have you heard of this stuff? It's basically grape juice made of the super secret acai berries that will not quite cure cancer, but it will make you feel like you you can climb mountains and you can do all this amazing stuff. $40 for, <laughs> $40 for a little jug of grape juice. I mean, I could go to Walmart right now. I could pick up pretty much the exact same thing for $2.50 and you're selling it to me for $40 because it's in a fancy wine bottle? Come on, man. And the health benefits, it's really going to make me feel like a million bucks it'll make me feel like i wasted 40 bucks so i don't know maybe maybe you have tried mona v maybe you sold it maybe you drank it uh drank the kool-aid as i say uh maybe it was for you that's awesome but for me i felt like i was being taken advantage of i was i had this this so-called friend of mine brought this stuff into work and he's like oh my gosh i got this great opportunity you got to try this stuff i'm gonna buy your lunch today we're gonna go out to lunch and you're gonna listen to this presentation and it was like ah two hours of my life that i can never get back trying to convince me that i can sell the same grape juice and live in a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house like this one individual that was speaking had because his wife started selling this grape juice and i'm like you know what buddy i'm so happy for you like literally i i have no raw feelings about you if that's what you want to do with your life and you can find customers who really buy into your program and buy into your story and buy into your 40 dollar grape juice then best of luck like i that's awesome congratulations that's great i'm going to go back to writing code because that's what i know how to do and i don't feel like a a cheesy dirt bag for doing what i do that's my experience with sales and so when i think about sales when i have thought about sales in the past those are kind of the two highlights that really speak out to me and i feel like <laughs> When I'm first starting my business, all of the entrepreneur type businesses that I never got lifted off of the ground back in the day and now starting Hello Tech Pros, you know, I have this this fear, this anxiety, this dirtbag feeling whenever I start thinking about money and how to approach someone and say, hey, for X number of dollars, I will put your advertisement as a sponsor on my show, right? I have X numbers of hundreds or thousands of guests every day or every week or every month or whatever. Here's my stats. Here's the value. I would like to exchange your <laughs> your uh, sponsorship for money. And uh, I, I just felt like a just a complete dirtbag for doing that because I've had all these horrible experiences as a kid and these horrible experiences with MLM programs that just sucked as an adult. It doesn't have to feel that way. It doesn't have to be that way because the, I think the reason why I felt that way, the reason why I felt like sales is dirty is because of these high pressure individuals that were only looking out for themselves. They weren't looking out for me. They weren't looking out for my best interest. They weren't looking out for my parents' best interest. They were looking at making that commission check. I guarantee you that those uh, those used car salesmen that tried to tried to sell my mom and dad on these used Cadillacs were not in you know did not care about um, the the gas mileage in the car and and the maintenance you know what it was going to take to keep this car up and running and what kind of shape it was going to be in you know how many. Uh, miles it had left on it before it needed like a new transmission or anything like that. I guarantee you that that was like a second or third option in their mind. What they were mainly thinking is, dude, I got rent to pay. I got bills to pay. Like they're cutting my electricity off at the end of the month. I got to make a sale. 
And so when when the salespeople are coming to you from that perspective, they're going to say whatever they need to say in order to get you to sign the sign the paperwork and do the deal and give them your credit card or, or give them your cash or whatever the deal is. The same thing with those MLMs. I think a lot of those things are put together not for the health benefits of this grape juice, right? But for, hey, here's a $40 product that has maybe a 50 cent, um, uh, what is it called? Cost, right? It, it costs 50 cents or a dollar or $2 to produce this product and we can sell it for $40 and we can bring in an entire team of distributors to sell it for us. All we got to do is is sell the first 10 or 50 uh, people on it and then train them on how to sell. And then we kick back and it's that pyramid scheme where, you know, the people that first started into it, the, the three or four or 10 or 50 or 100 people that first got into it way back in the day, a couple of years ago, before you heard of it, they're making bucks. Like they're making millions of dollars. And all the people, when you hear about it, like, good luck selling $40 grape juice is all I'm trying to say, right? The the market is is pretty much tapped out. So those are my experiences and that's why I felt like a dirt bag. It doesn't have to be that way and here's how. You have to really empathize and care about your customer. Before they're a customer, you have to really care and empathize with people about the problems going on in their life, the problems that are going on in their business and what they're struggling with and what they need. So Earlier in, um, what was that, uh, Wednesday's episode, Tuesday's and Wednesday's episode, you know, we talked about the idea that you were meant to launch and then when to bring on help for your startup. And it really comes down to these great business ideas. You don't need, um, I think too many people get, get so excited about the solution, about the solution that they're providing to the customers or potential customers, right? You get so enamored with this technology that you're building, this code that you're building, these integrations of systems that you're plugging together or these uh, services that you're providing to people and offering because in your mind, like it's amazing and it's going to help so many people out. Well, instead of getting so enamored with the solution, let's get really, really in-depth, a lot of empathy, a lot of... uh, um, thoughtfulness about the problems for the customer. And that goes back to creating relationships, really, really in-depth relationships. We talked about that on yesterday's episode. So it kind of gives you a hint on what the technology episode was about. But on yesterday's episode about building those relationships, and this ties into it. How do you build relationships with your audience members with people, you know, random people out on the street, how do you build that awareness to what they want? And it's not just like A-B testing, right? Split testing and saying, okay, do you want product A do you, or do you want product B? Uh, taste this grape juice and taste that grape juice. Which one do you want to buy? No, I'm talking about understanding what's going on in their lives, understanding what's going on in their business and understanding the problems that they're facing. So you're not getting married to or you're not falling in love with the the solution that you have, right? Your app or your idea or your product or your service, you're falling in love as they say, or, or getting married to, which means committing to the problem that these individuals have. So how do you do that? It starts with conversations. It starts with literally sitting down. If you can face to face, picking up the phone and talking to people, emailing them, surveys, reading um, the the things that these people are posting online. They're already posting all kinds of uh, troubles, right? Their life troubles, their business troubles. They're post- posting all that online. And they're saying, hey, uh, you know, my wedding day was going to be fantastic. I had it all planned out. Um, you know, the flowers that were there, everything was beautiful. Uh, the weather was nice. Uh, the weather cooperated, you know, everything was great. And the groom was late and I felt like a complete loser as the bride because I'm, I'm waiting in the church and the groom was late because stuff happened. That was a horrible experience. I don't want any bride to ever feel that way again. So there's got to be a service or product out there that will grab these grooms and grab them by the ears and drag them into church and bring them uh, to their wedding day so they're not late. I have no idea if that's a product or service. I have no idea if people are complaining about that. But I can imagine there is, right? If there, if that has happened to someone, I guarantee you there's a story out there on Pinterest or on Facebook or on, on a blog or something 
where brides are complaining about their wedding day and their their grooms not showing up on time. That is, if that has happened to one people, then it's probably happened to ten. If it's happened to ten, it's probably happened to a hundred. And there's probably some some tearful, emotional, rage filled quotes out there on the internet that you can find. So. What are we doing? We're not getting tied to the solution. We're getting tied to the problem. What's the problem? Let's go back to those people who are talking about it and putting that information out there and volunteering their information. And can we not just ask them a few questions? Hey, I'm doing some market survey. I'm I'm working on a product in this space. I would love to get your feedback on it. Not on the product, but on this problem. What happened? Where were you at? What were you feeling? What 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 happened? What didn't happen? What would you have would have liked to have happened? If this was a perfect world and I could wave a magic wand and this problem completely go away or be resolved, what would your new life look like? And if we can start having those conversations and relationships with people and build up those relationships over time, as we talked about yesterday, it's going to go from a cold lead to a warm lead to a hot lead, meaning they're going to be people who have absolutely no idea who you are, what your name is, what your brand is about, what your logo stands for, right? To somebody's, oh, okay, you're that person that, <laughs> you're that, person that gets grooms to the weddings on time. Okay, I got gotcha. you. To that person that's really, really thankful that you are out there providing the service or providing this product. If it's a, a health or fitness or, or a business, just think of all the things, areas um, in people's life or people's business where they struggle or where they're, where they're lacking, right? If you're a software developer, it's not about the software. It's about the solutions that your software provides. And it's not just about the solutions that your software provides. It's about the problems and the struggle that these individuals are uh, are having, right? So if you have a SaaS product that really changes the way that social media works and it makes it so easy for people to, I don't know, schedule their blog posts or whatever, schedule their Twitter posts, um, that's great. But if you're just trying to say, okay, I want to be kind of like uh, Hootsuite, but different. I want to be kind of like uh, Canva, but different. I want to be a little bit like Meet Edgar, but different. And I'm going to combine some of these features. Okay, what's the problem that you're trying to solve? Who are the ideal customers that want all of the bells and whistles that you're trying to integrate together into a single product? Do people actually want that? Do they have that problem? Or do you just think it's cool? Are there enough people out there that really feel strongly enough about that problem where they need a fully featured integrated like Canva plus Hootsuite plus Meet Edgar all rolled up together? Do they need that? Are there people asking for that? Are there people begging like, oh my gosh, if if I had that, then whew, that would be awesome. Then I can consolidate like three of my invoices together every month into a low payment. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. So here's how you go find those people. Because when it, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is find our first customers, our very first customers. Number one, look in your current network of people that you know and people that they know, right? So talk to your friends and family, talk to your colleagues, talk to everyone. And when I say talk to, I mean literally, like get on the phone with them when you're out in public and meeting people, talking to people, like have more and more face-to-face -face or phone call conversations or Skype conversations or whatever, but real conversations with people and say, hey, I'm working in this space, this, this, uh, this space of social media management. And I feel like there's probably a lot of people who struggle with, you know, these gaps in the products between Hootsuite and, and Meet Edgar and then the, the image side Canva, right? So I, I, have, I have an idea to bring all that together. Do you know anybody who uses those? Do you know anybody who uh, has a business that needs these types of solutions? And then have those conversations with those individuals, right? First, you're looking for referrals, referrals for not a customer, but re re referral for somebody who could put you in front of an individual who has the problems that you're working on. And your first lot of time, I don't know how much time it's going to take in your specific case, but a lot of time needs to be de devoted into having these, these customer conversations about the problem, not about the solution that you offer, but about the problem that they have. And after you have 
two or three or 10 or 100 of these conversations, and I'm not joking, have a lot of conversations with people about the problems that they have, you'll start to see trends on, you know what, they don't really care about Canva. They do their image editing stuff offline. They consider that completely separate. And then their social media management, all of the different Twitter accounts and LinkedIn accounts and all the other stuff they have to manage between you know, the, the features they use in Meet Edgar and the features that they use in Hootsuite, like they, they're, they're either in one camp or the other. They don't want all the features of a combined system. They just want like some, something else. And once you know what that something else in, is, then you can shift your direction and start focusing on the solution that's actually going to add value to that individual, right? The solution that's actually going to help solve the real problem that real customers or real potential customers will have. And then once you have that, you said, okay, now that I understand your problem, I'm going to reiterate the problem to you. This is what I understand the problem is. And they say, yes. And you say, this is why it's important to you. They say, yes. And you say, this is what it's causing uh, like how this problem is affecting your life or affecting your business in this negative way. And they go, yeah, dude, exactly. And you say, okay, if I could solve it, would it be worth 20 bucks to you? Would it be worth 50 bucks? Would it be worth $2,000? And when they say, absolutely, holy cow, if you could solve that for me, forget about how you're going to solve it. But just if you can solve that problem, I would gladly give you $100 a month. Because that problem, to me, is a $500 a month problem. And if you can solve it for $100 a month, I would gladly, easily give you $100 a month. Now, you take that input and you go and build your product. You go build your service. You go and build your solution. Then you start working about the, worrying about the solution. Too many times you're worried about the solution up front instead of the problem. So... I mentioned that there's some um, there's some places to look at. These people are already talking online. Once you've talked to a few people face to face, you can go out and get more information about what um, strangers, like people you don't know, are thinking about or talking about. Um, a couple of places you can do it um, that are very very effective are forums and Facebook groups and uh, customer support places, right? Where, where people post like, Hey, I'm having a problem with my Apple TV. Like every time I go to Netflix and I click on play in Netflix, it crashes, right? That's, a, that's literally a problem that Chad has right now. So fix that for me. And I would gladly pay you some money for it. <laughs> so go out to the forums, the Facebook groups and the, the customer support areas on the internet and do a few searches with these keywords. Here's a few keywords that you can try and you can find a lot of interesting information about the problems that people are actually having and not the problems that you think they're having. Search for, I hate it when, and, and put double quotes around it. So quote, I hate it when, quote. If you go into Apple's uh, Apple TV forums and you search for, I hate it when, I guarantee you you're going to come up with, I hate it when I turn on Netflix and the Apple TV crashes it literally reboots and it goes back to the main screen it takes like three minutes to get back to you know i'm trying to watch gotham and it crashed and now it's taking me three more minutes to boot back up the apple tv go back into netflix find the gotham episode that i was going to try to watch and then click on play again i hate it when that happens freaking drives me crazy here's another phrase to look for doesn't work or didn't work put that in double quotes doesn't work what doesn't work i don't know that's what you're trying to find is what doesn't work. What doesn't work about the Apple TV? What doesn't work about Hootsuite? What doesn't work about uh, getting your grooms to the church, right? I have some ideas on what might work and what might not work, but these individuals are telling you exactly what doesn't work because they're complaining on the support forums. They're complaining on Facebook. Um, they're, even on Twitter, you can pull a little bit of information at it. Doesn't work, didn't work, or not for me. Another good one is not for me because it may be a great solution for other people, but it's not for me or didn't work for me, doesn't work for me. These are keywords, uh, common phrases that people use all the time to describe something that uh, might be a decent product for some segment of the population, but isn't a good product, isn't a good solution for their unique circumstance. 
So earlier in the week, we talked about the riches are in the niches. And um, in that case, it means, okay, you're not just talking about social media. You're digging down into, uh, you know, Twitter posts. And you're not just talking about Twitter posts. You're talking about Twitter posts when you have 100 accounts, right? If somebody is managing 100 Twitter accounts and they're trying to manage all of the backlogs of stuff and manage that, that's probably a unique situation other than like me where I have like two accounts and I only only really post to HelloTech Pros. I really don't do a lot with my personal one, right? So me and my problems and another person, an agency who has a hundred Twitter accounts or a thousand Twitter accounts, those are going to be two different complete problems. And if you search for it, not for me, doesn't work for me. Um, in my case, these are phrases that you can search for and find real life problems that people are talking to. Or here's a, here's a few more we'll run through. Alternative for men, for women, for girls, boys, so forth. How do, how do I, how do you, how can, how does it, solution, it works, it worked for me, it worked in my case. Those are a few keywords that you can search for. And if you do a combination of these two things, you're both looking for problems that people have online. And then you're going back and you're having real life face to face or online or email or whatever you can do is as much as you can conversations with real life people who are experiencing these and say, you know, it, it might be a little both. Maybe you have a, a customer conversation on Monday and you say, you know, tell me about your your social media problems. And they say, well, I, I'm struggling with this or that and the other. And then you go back on online and you find out that there's a huge segment different, uh, different difference, <laughs> excuse me, between people with just a couple of accounts or a few accounts and agencies that have hundreds of accounts or thousands of accounts, right? So now you're going to go back to your, your customer that you talked to earlier and say, okay, uh, on Wednesday, hey, I or next Monday, hey, I, I I was looking at the problem some more, and one of the things I didn't ask you was how many accounts do you have? And they said, oh, I have 842, and you go, oh wow, really 842? So why do you have that many? Well, because I do X Y Z. I have all these startups that I manage. I have, you know, my boss owns all of these different things. We have an agency, and da 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 da. Oh, okay. So what are the specific problems that you have in this case, as opposed to just like your normal, your personal account, Twitter problems. And they go, oh, okay. And they shift direction. And they maybe in their head, they're thinking about, you're trying to help them with like their own individual profile and like how to get the best graphic up on the top or something. But really you want to shift the conversation into, okay, you're an agency that has 842 Twitter profiles that you manage. How do you manage all the content and all the posts and all the X, Y, Z for that? So in this way, you're going to, through these conversations, these real life conversations, you're going to come to a point when they are begging to give you money. They're going to say, yes, yes, yes. That's exactly the problem that I have. Yes, yes, yes. It, you are you are speaking my language, dude. You are absolutely nailing exactly what I'm talking about. If you can solve that for me, then I would gladly give you money. This is when you convert to your first customers. You say, you know what? I've got a solution in the works. I would love to give you a heavily, heavily discounted price in order to test out my solution. Um, there's a lots of different options, right? Hey, let's try it on you. If it works, it's a hundred bucks. If it doesn't work, it's not going to cost you anything. I want to get results. I want to help you overcome this or just, you know, I am, I'm discounting it by 50% or 80% or 99% or whatever. Whatever money that you think you want to charge for at your base rate, just say, hey, I want to give you a killer deal. I want to offer you this killer, amazing price. Or m maybe at the very beginning, your price isn't money. Maybe your first customers, all you're doing is charging them a testimonial, right? I would love to get your testimonial at the end of this when you say, man, she solved my problem. It was a really big problem. This is what it was costing me. And now because I followed her steps or I, I used her software, I used her service, it has completely changed it around. And this is the this is the result. This is the savings. And I would gladly go back to her for, you know, additional work. That's what you're looking for. You're looking to 
get those conversations so that you can speak the problem at the level that the customers have where they feel like you've literally been walking around in their shoes and doing their day-to-day stuff and feeling and living and and <laughs> and just gosh being crushed by the same problem that they're crushed by when you can do that finding the customers are easy because you're empathetic to the problem you're not being a sleazy salesman you're not being a push something down their throat. You're really actively looking to solve the problem and not just push some product or solution at them that they don't need, but you're really talking about the products that engages them and lights up their ears and lights up their eyes or just makes them sweat with frustration because they're like, hey, you wanna talk about this problem? Let's talk about this problem. I tell you what, I've tried this solution and that solution and this other solution, none of them work and I'm getting really pissed off. If you can get that kind of emotion out of these individuals, then you have hit pay dirt because once you find the right solution for the right problem, then getting people to pay for that is a lot easier. That's how you find your first customers. Okay, tomorrow, tomorrow, wait, before tomorrow, today, you're gonna want to do the homework. So if you haven't already, Go to hellotechpros.com slash start. Get access to all seven days of the podcast, all seven days of this course, both the the audio files as well as the emails. In the emails, I'm going to hold you accountable for following the homework. I'm going to hold you accountable for actually following through and taking steps, committing your time and effort to actually get your business off the ground and get to these first customers. So I'm going to give you some homework for today's episode. Go to hellotechpros.com slash start as in start your first business, hellotechpros.com slash start. Tomorrow is Entrepreneurship Saturday on Hello Tech Pros. Well, gosh, we've been talking about entrepreneurship all week long. And so tomorrow is going to be an amazing kind of mashup uh, of a lot of the great advice that I've gotten from a lot of my, um, a lot of my guests here in the show. And it's really about once you once you kind of know what you're doing, uh, once you know the the problem, excuse me, once you know the problem that you're working on, and once you know the solution that really really converts um, audience members to customers, right? People who know about your brand to really trust and like you and want to get your solution. Once you have tested that out and have a couple of customers in the bank, and you want to start growing your audience. You want to get more and more people aware of your brand. Tomorrow, I've got some awesome, free, absolutely free marketing channels for your startup. So I'm going to tell you about how to get your message, get your product, get your solution, get your um, problem description in the front of a lot more people for absolutely for free. So again, when you're when you're building your startup, my advice is, regardless of if you're going out and getting investors or not, try to bootstrap it as much as possible. Try to spend as least amount of money as you possibly can. So here's some awesome free tips or some awesome tips on how to get free marketing channels for your startup. That'll be tomorrow. Sign up for the full course. Get access to everything. Don't miss a single episode. Go to hellotechpros.com slash start. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 208. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash Slack. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Minio Cloud Storage. Minio is a cloud object storage server for developers and DevOps written in Go. The Go programming language is the emerging language of choice for modern cloud infrastructure projects, and it allows Minio to be highly concurrent and lightweight. Minio is Amazon S3 compatible, built with microstorage architecture in mind, but at its heart, Minio is simple, scalable, and supported by a passionate developer and user community. In episode 89 of Hello Tech Pros, I talked with A.B. Periasami one of the founders of Minio, about the importance of community support and recruiting software developers who are as passionate about their product's code as artists are of their art. Check out that episode at hellotechpros.com slash 89 and check out Minio Cloud Storage at minio.io. That's M-I-N-I-O dot I-O.
Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high-quality, yet budget-friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, writers, and graphic artists, they can help you build your podcast from planning, post-production, and platform submission. Using only cutting-edge software and studio equipment, they're here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send them an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call them at 209 209- 505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been People Friday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I discuss entrepreneurship. On Sunday, being unplugged. Monday, motivation. Tuesday, productivity. Wednesday, leadership. Thursday, technology, and then back again on Friday to talk people in communication. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.